Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to The Wellness Coach on Block Talk Radio. I'm your host, Edie Summers, and my very esteemed guest today is Dr. Ronnie Pollock. He's currently a research fellow at the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine, Jocelyn Diabetes Center at Harvard Medical School. And Dr. Pollock is a board certified in family medicine at the Hebrew University Medical School and completed an MBA degree at the Technion, the Israeli Institute of Technology, and a cuisine degree at the Le Cordon Bleu in Sydney, Australia. Dr. Pollock, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, founded the Hadassah Healthy Cooking and Lifestyle Center, where his first lifestyle medicine intervention won the Hebrew University's K Award for Innovation. Dr. Pollock is the co-founder of the Israeli Society of Lifestyle Medicine and the author of the best-selling book, Delicious Diabetic Recipes by Pen and Imagine Publishing. He joined the ACLM in 2010. His current focus is in clinical and translational research relating to lifestyle medicine, especially in the areas of healthy food preparation and medical education. Currently, he works under the mentorship of Dr. Edward Phillips, focusing on incorporating healthy food preparation into Jocelyn's lifestyle programs, food preparation coaching, and lifestyle medical education. And um, Dr. Ronnie Pollock will be joining us soon here, and we're going to be talking about lifestyle medicine today. I don't think I've ever done a show on this before, and although I think I may have mentioned it a few times, but um, this is a really um, trending this is a real trend in in health and medicine these days, and so this is going to be a really interesting conversation. <clears throat> I'm just going to read you more of um, Ronnie's um, profile on LinkedIn. <clears throat> this is how we actually connected. Um, his medical background, he's a family physician with a special interest in lifestyle medicine. His experience includes developing and operating Excuse me. Healthy lifestyle interventions for patients and healthcare providers. Topics include prevention and treatment of medical conditions such as CVD, diabetes, cancer, IBD, celiac, obesity for children and adults, geriatric rehabilitation, and others. His culinary background. He's a chef, which I think is really great as well, and he has a special interest in healthy food. He says that his experience includes developing recipes and culinary techniques for the healthy population, as well as a variety of special dietary recommendations for people who have diabetes, again, IBD, celiac, um, heart disease, cancer, and more. He has experience teaching chefs and managing healthy culinary intervention in large-scale kitchens. Um, his research background includes evaluating health promotion programs and lifestyle interventions, as well as health, as well as health professional lifestyle empowering programs. And you might be wondering what that means. I know that he has an event coming up here really soon, and it's all it's going to be um, about um, lifestyle medicine, including um, stress management, self care. Um, and also, actually, this is a really interesting event that Ronnie's going to be at. Um, I know that Margaret Moore is going to be there um, talking about wellness coaching. And also, um, Dr. Herbert Benson is going to be there. He, he is the, um, he's the Director Emeritus of the Benson Henry Institute for Mind Body Medicine at Massachusetts. General Hospital, and he wrote the best-selling book, The Relaxation Response. So lifestyle medicine really covers a lot of different things. Um, it's really comprehensive. And just to go back to um, Ronnie's um, really impressive resume here, in his background, his academic teaching background, he developed curriculum and teaching nutrition and lifestyle medicine to medical students, residents, and practicing physicians in the Hebrew University School of Medicine, Harvard Medical School, and more. 
and he also teaches culinary students in Hadassah College Culinary School. And I'm just going to check and see if he's on the line yet um, and check my email here too. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what lifestyle medicine is and also um, – um, Dr. Ronnie Pollock has a, a best-selling book out. It's called Delicious Diabetic Recipes, the gourmet book for a healthy lifestyle. You can find this on Amazon.com. Um, it is in paperback. And um, I think it's really interesting that Ronnie is a unique combination. This is what it says on Amazon. He's a unique combination of a medical doctor and also a Le Cordon Bleu master chef. I mean, you really can't beat that combination. Um <laughs> And I'm, I'm hoping Ronnie joins us soon because there's that is this is what lifestyle medicine is, and it is going out. It's 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 practicing kind of what the the phrase implies. It's using your lifestyle to help you achieve better health and also well being. And so I think it's really great that he's a chef because um, <laughs> so much of well being happens. Um, in the kitchen, right? It's like the food that we prepare and things of that nature. And so his book that's out, Delicious Diabetic Recipes, The Gourmet Cookbook for a Healthy Lifestyle, um, it's, you know, he really goes into, it's these are recipes for people with diabetes. And of course, we know more and more people are being diagnosed with diabetes, um, even really young children. And um, according to Ronnie, uh, there's a solution, um, and this is, again, these are quotes from Amazon, sufferers can live longer, healthier lives just by changing the way they eat. And this is lifestyle medicine right here, changing the way you eat, incorporating regular exercise, um, practicing meditation, practicing self-care, practicing stress management. These are the things that make up what's called lifestyle medicine, and I'm actually going to go over to the um, Institute for Lifestyle Medicine. Um, we have they have a, a website. Um, it is run it is run through Harvard University, I believe. And um, let me just see if I can pull it up here really quickly. I'm going to read you some of the information on there. Um, this is a really great trend, I think. And um, I really encourage you to check it out because I think, of course, the usual um, solution that we tend to try is is the path of least resistance, right? Like it's it's what's the what's the what's the first um, like the magic pill I can take, or what's the least amount of work I can do? And and I'm not here to preach to you; that's not my role. Um, but here I am. I'm on the page, the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Um, this is where Ronnie is a research fellow. And um, I'm also going to let me just check the chat room here. Um, we have a couple of guests here if anyone wants to type in any questions. Um, we're still waiting for um, Dr. Ronnie Pollock to join us, which I'm sure he will soon. Um, so here we go. The Institute of Lifestyle Medicine was founded in 2007 at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital and Harvard Medical School to reduce lifestyle-related death and disease in society through clinician-directed interventions with patients. It's pretty interesting, huh? A nonprofit professional education research and advocacy organization, the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine is uniquely positioned to ignite clinician involvement <clears throat> excuse me, in lifestyle medicine. <clears throat> they offer the following services, lifestyle medicine um, CME courses, including lifestyle medicine tools for promoting healthy change and active lives, transforming ourselves and our patients. Um, of course, that's if you're a practitioner. Um, and also other online courses. Um, they also offer training for health professionals wishing to improve their personal lifestyle choices so they can be more effective role models for their patients. I think it's really interesting how that kind of goes both ways, right? Like if you are the patient, you definitely want to work with um, someone who is a good role model, right, Who's who leads a healthy lifestyle themselves. Um, I think that makes a huge difference. Um, the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine also offers consulting services to corporations, hospitals, medical practices, health and wellness providers, and fitness facilities. And additionally, um, they're, they have an agenda of advocacy to promote health through lifestyle medicine. 
so, and again, um, it's just this is an up and coming um, area of of what we would call actually medicine. Um, it's just a we're incorporating lifestyle as a way to affect the course of our health and well being, as opposed to going um, what's perhaps the easier route of using prescription drugs and surgery. And I'm not here to knock prescription drugs and surgery. I'm just saying that they're all alternatives. And um, I, Ronnie's not here yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna send him a quick email, um, just as a little reminder. <laughs> Um, we did confirm yesterday, and I just want to make sure he's on the East Coast, and you just you never know. Um, sometimes things happen, and so I'll send him a really quick note here. Go ahead and feel free to call in if you have any questions um, or any comments if you're in that chat room. Um, if you have any questions or comments about lifestyle medicine, what are you doing to improve your health um, in terms of lifestyle? And again, we were mentioning that um, the other things that can be lifestyle medicine can include um, self-care, stress management, um, wellness coaching. I would definitely add coaching and wellness coaching into that picture. Um, there are so many different ways that we can affect change, and of course, cooking healthy food, which is one of the things that um, hopefully we're going to be talking about today, because I think that in our really fast-paced society, it's super, super easy to kind of, um, that's kind of like the first thing that goes often, isn't it? I mean, is sort of like, okay, well, I'm just going to you know, grab some food on the way home or, and you know, f use that frozen food or just, we don't really think too much about it sometimes and we maybe we might think to ourselves, well, it's just for today that I'm going to do that, but really those things add up over time and then it becomes a lifestyle um, of how we are living our lives and how those, those tiny actions that we do add up um, into making actually major health changes over time. Um, and I found, um, as someone who had a chronic condition um, for a long time, it was those small lifestyle changes that I made that actually made a huge difference in me recovering from a chronic condition. So um, that's why I'm such a huge proponent of lifestyle medicine. And um, I'm hoping that Ronnie um, can shed some more information for us here. Okay, I'm going to type him a really quick message. <laughs> Um, this is this is what happens on live radio sometimes, and that's why I encourage anyone who's listening to call in too. Um, we can definitely still have a conversation about this, and hopefully Ronnie will join us at some point. Um, I'm typing him a really quick message here. We are live on the air. <laughs> okay, we'll see if he's around. <laughs> and put a little smiley face too. Okay. And so if anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to call in. And um, if not, I'm going to tell you just a little bit more about the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine and Dr. Ronnie Pollock, and maybe we'll have to reschedule, and that's perfectly okay. Um, I know that some of the other institutes that maybe that they are connected with here, um, well, some of their representatives for Institute of Lifestyle Medicine include the U.S. National Physical Activity Plan, the healthcare sector, American College of Preventative Medicine's Lifestyle Medicine Committee, Executive Council for ACSM's Exercise is Medicine Global Initiative. I think that's such a great tagline, don't you think? Exercise is medicine. I just absolutely love that. Um, and also, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine Advisory Board. So that's that's enough of the maybe the boring part. But um, so I'm going to get into let's do like tools and resources, um, maybe education. Um, what are some things that you can do to incorporate lifestyle medicine into your life? Um, kind of beyond the basics that we were talking about. Um, okay, here's one of my favorites. I'm going to pull this up. This is on their page, um, eliciting the relaxation response. Um, now, this is, again, I was mentioning Dr. Herbert Benson. He's at one of these events that Dr. Ronnie Pollock is going to be at really soon here along with Margaret Moore. Um, the event is called Practicing Lifestyle Medicine, Tools for Healthy Change. And let's see, this is going to happen on June 20th, 2014 through Saturday, June 21st, 2014, and this is in Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so let me just check and see if Ronnie's on here. Nope, he's not on here yet. Okay, that's okay. Um, so Ronnie's going to be at this event that I just mentioned, and one of his um, colleagues is gonna, that's going to be there is um, 
Dr. Um, let me see, make sure I'm saying his name correctly, Dr. Herbert Benson. And um, I have used a lot of Dr. Benson's research in my book, The Memory of Health. Um, he taught, He actually discovered and coined the term the relaxation response. Now, this is a tool that you can use um, for promoting healthy change. It, it is a part of lifestyle medicine, and it's called eliciting the relaxation response. And there are two essential steps. And so essentially what this is, let me first just say what the relaxation response is, and I'm going to check to see if Ronnie's on. He's not on yet. Okay. The relaxation response is the opposite of the stress response. So for anyone who knows what that is, um, it's the fight or flight response. So if you're feeling stressed out and you feel like you're you're stuck in traffic or you're late for work or you're you're worried about your home life or you're worried about getting to wherever you need to go or doing the million things that you need to do, you're in the stress response, most likely. Um so the lack, the relaxation response is the opposite response of that, and it's um, being in the parasympathetic response. And there are two ways to get there, according to Dr. Benson. There's the repetition of a word, sound, phrase, prayer, or muscular activity. That's one I tend to use a lot. I tend to go on meditative walks. And number two is passive disregard of everyday thoughts that inevitably come to mind and the return to your repetition. Now, that actually is also known as mindfulness meditation, <laughs> just so you know. Um, so mindfulness is another way to um, elicit the relax- relaxation response, in my opinion. But the whole point of this is that this is a way that you can incorporate lifestyle medicine into your daily life. Um, I find things like playing relaxing music or listening to repetitive so- sound um, I have a Brookstone that I'll use, and um, I can, I'll sometimes play that, and um, I'll play a lot of Pandora um, while I'm working, and just everything I can do to stay relaxed, um, this is definitely something I struggle with. Um, and another thing is, so we were talking about, oh, here we go, Ronnie just wrote to me, let's see what he's saying. Um, Hi, Edie, is it now? <laughs> Let me just respond to him. <laughs> Yes, it is. And let me give him the number again. He might be calling in. We'll see. Um, let me give him the number here. So I just wanted to give you an example of one tool of, of lifestyle medicine, and that would be practicing the relaxation response. Meditation is another one. Um, mindfulness meditation is huge. Um, whoops, we'll see if he can read that. <laughs> I may have to read you this message on here. Um, let me rewrite to him. Hang on a second. So there's mindfulness meditation. There's cooking. Um, there's really like getting into the kitchen and kind of, I think, kind of reintroducing yourself to food and like what it is and also the relationship between um, yourself and food. Like I was talking with Mark David a little while ago. That was the last interview that I did. Um, what is your relationship to food? What is your relationship to other people? And food, um, like how does cooking bring people closer? Um, I really feel like there's a huge missing component for a lot of us in terms of um, these really fast-paced lives that we lead. And um, again, I think that food preparation tends to be one of the first things that goes. And um, so I don't know. I'm I'm definitely doing everything I can to. I'm trying to learn at least one new recipe a month. Maybe I'll make it two a month eventually. And you know I'm not perfect. I definitely have moments when um, I will just like um, throw an Amy's in the in from the freezer um, into the microwave. I will admit that I've done that. Um, I probably do it more than I should. However, I try to always have fresh salad. And um, you know it is. It's just about. Um, reconnecting to kind of what keeps us alive, right? I think that's a huge part of it. So, okay, I sent him a message. I don't even know if he can read it, but we'll see if he calls in here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Again, this is live radio for you. Oh, here he is. Um, Let me see if this is Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Is this you? Yeah, hi. Hi. (laughs) I just sent you a message that may or may not be legible. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. Oh, no, I think that was the time. (laughs) It's okay. It's really confusing when there's the East Coast and West Coast, and it's just it's it's super confusing. So um, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And um, I want to make sure I'm saying your name correctly too. How do you say your name? I've been saying Dr. Ronnie Pollock. Is that correct or incorrect? Or that's, per- that's, that's perfect. Okay. Good. 
<laughs> okay. Well, um, and I was wondering, um, thank, again, just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. This is a real treat um, for me and for um, anyone who's listening. And I was wondering if you could tell us, like, what your definition of lifestyle medicine is. I've been sort of um, – trying to give a definition of it, but I think coming from an expert is will probably be <laughs> very helpful. <laughs> so what is your definition? <laughs> well, um, the defini- I mean, it's not my definition. It's the definition that was uh, published in the Journal of, a Medical, of American Medical Association three years ago. I think it was the first article that published that like summarized the whole idea. Okay. And it's talked about uh, adopting healthy behaviors, and sustaining it. Mm, okay. I mean, not just eating healthy the next month, eating healthy from now on. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's the rub. Uh, and then, so then, how how does one how does one get there from, say, eating healthy for one day to eating healthy for a lifetime? What is the I know that um, I know that I use wellness coaching for part of that. But when you're educating, all right, yeah, that's students, a good idea. Yeah, students and practitioners. That that could be actually how we met is is through the whole um, wellness coaching link. I'm thinking, um, you know, uh, between well coaches. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how we met, but I think that could be it. But um, but when you're when you're training students and practitioners, um, what are some of the things that you say to them? That like those you know kind of those keywords or those taglines that help people realize like or have those aha moments when they kind of connect the dots between okay I can eat well for one day and that's great but how do I maintain that for a lifetime and kind of switch gears in our heads so that it becomes natural? I think that's a key point. Um, well, it has a connection with coaching, but not not necessarily. I mean okay. because. I mean, m- many people, when they're thinking about changing their lifestyle, or like mm-hmm. maybe, let's say, doing a diet, mm-hmm. so they think about, all right, let's do a, a huge effort to lose weight for like uh, a month till I lose like 10 pounds, and mm-hmm. that's the goal. And mm-hmm. and they don't really think of uh, what can I really adapt to my life. I mean, what what can I do for more than one month? And mm-hmm. And we said... You don't have to lose 10 pounds in a month. Um, you don't necessarily even have to lose one pound in a month. You, you should mm-hmm. adopt behavior that you think you can sustain. Uh-huh. And after, okay. after, the new, uh, after the new behavior will sustain, you can think about new ones. Uh, and then maybe in two years, you'll, I don't know, even lose a couple of pounds. That's fine. But, you know, we're talking about life, lifetime. Mm-hmm. I think that's so, it's a little bit new way of thinking. It really is. And I I'm really, I was really listening carefully to what you're saying because in coaching we tend to have goals, whereas this doesn't sound like it's about goals necessarily. It's about um, adopting behaviors that you can, like, sustain, like you said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that that most likely will have benefits of um, reaching your a healthy weight and mm-hmm. things of that nature. But that's mm-hmm. not necessarily the goal. Right, and and if even even I mean even in in, in the coaching area, we know that mm-hmm. that the goal that we need to set are behaviors, and, and weight is not a good goal because mm-hmm. because right. we don't have enough control on weight i mean how what mm. if if your goal is to lose one pound in two weeks how mm. can you know what you should do i mean you can eat mm. less you can exercise more but we don't have like a specific uh, matrix to know all right i'll add well, we think well i hope we hope we we have but we don't really have i cannot tell you all right you should exercise um maybe five minutes more a day eat 10 calories less a day, multiply mm-hmm. it, and in two weeks you'll, you lose 1.2 pounds. It, it doesn't work like this. Mm-hmm. And, and pounds yeah. and, and weight, weight is not um, the ultimate goal. I mean, there is mm-hmm. a huge health benefit uh, from eating healthy food and exercising that's not, cons- that's not 
uh, concerned with weight. I mean, I, I can mm-hmm. still be uh, a little bit overweight, but but I can improve my health very much if I will uh, improve my um, diet and exercise more. Mm. I I was really struck by when you said that weight's not the goal. Um, because, again, we tend to focus on these kind of arbitrary goals, like I want to lose 10 pounds, and it's kind of missing the point. That's what I hear you saying, that it's it's really about increasing our, our level of well-being um, and, and being healthier and enjoying life more. Isn't that what it's more about than, like, reaching some arbitrary number on a scale that's kind of missing the whole point? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's missing the whole point, but it also can be very frustrating because uh, because mm-hmm. it's really, mm-hmm. um, I mean, if you let's say if you if you are improving your exercise level level and you exercise, let's say 150 minutes a week, mm-hmm. which is a, a a really fantastic goal, and mm-hmm. and and then you realize that you don't losing weight, so you might say, all right, so if I'm not losing weight and it's very I mean, it's not difficult, it's not easy for me to exercise so much, so well I can stop it. It doesn't it was it doesn't work for me. But mm-hmm. it's not true because exercise has a huge uh, benefits that are overweight, behind weight. So if mm-hmm. if the weight, just the weight is the goal, so we missed um, a huge uh, opportunity to improve our health. Mm. It's, it's lifestyle medicine is much more like it's holistic. It's a much more holistic approach to health and well-being um, than sort of isolating. Um, certain goals like losing weight or, um, let's say, um, lowering blood pressure. I mean, even oh, lowering cholesterol. I mean, these are obviously not blood pressure, but um, lowering cholesterol. These are obviously um, can be really crucial sometimes, like for certain individuals. Well, maybe I shouldn't use the word crucial, but um, but so, but you're you're the doctor, so I'm curious. Um, how did you get into lifestyle medicine, and also how did you get into medicine in general? Maybe I should ask you that question first. How did you get into medicine? And then what led you to lifestyle medicine out of that? Um, me personally? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, all right. Uh, actually, actually my, my, first, my, my first meeting with medicine was while I, I, I wanted to be a vet. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure um, how, is, how, uh, how it's here to be a vet, but um, I... <laughs> I, I, I I graduated in, in Israel, and and in my country you um, you have to do you you have to start with either bio, biology or or a medicine to be a vet. Mm-hmm. So I started okay. I decided to start to learn medicine, and and then I I, I went to with, with that path. Hmm. And then so then but my my, my dream was to be a vet. That is so great. Well, I I happen to love animals. So um, I think that's fantastic. And <laughs> and then so then so you were studying to be a vet, and then what piqued your interest in um, working with people? <laughs> um, I mean, I I started to learn medicine. That's that's the way to become vet in my country. Mm-hmm. I mean, you start okay. you start medicine, and then after after. After a few years, you you can apply to uh, to go to vet school. Um, oh, I see. Okay. But I I started with with people and I like them, you know. <laughs> I like people. Well, that that's always helpful. They're a nice creature. <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then where where did the interest from for lifestyle medicine come in? Um. I, I always I always was interested in in uh, in education, mm-hmm. and and I okay. think lifestyle is um, has a lot a lot with education. Hmm. Okay. I think so. I mean, you you it's like it's it's more a way of living than 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 prescribing medication. Hmm. I think that is so. I think that is very interesting that you said that. Um. And so then, how does a you as a doctor, when you're meeting with patients, I mean, do you are you seeing patients right now, or are you just like training other doctors, or do you, or do you, you still you still uh, um, have practice, right? Right, and this month I don't see patients, but but um, mm-hmm. I'm, I saw and I will see a lot, so, so we can talk about that. <laughs> okay, so my so my question is, when you see a patient, 
And if it's uh-huh. your um, – when you're working with somebody, and let's say they have diabetes, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. what would be a, a protocol that you would go through with them that would be like your protocol versus a typical protocol that someone might see with a doc- – like if they're going in to see a doctor – um, what would di- differentiate, say, incorporating lifestyle medicine um, with you as well, opposed to the traditional way? Well, I think, first of all, um, I'm being mindful to the fact that I, I would like to talk with, with the patient about lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I mean, in many okay. physicians, uh, be- because, because of the shortage in time, uh, don't get into it. Right, uh, right. It, it, it before before asking me how do I do it, uh, we can talk about to do it, you know. Right. Before okay. Before the how, uh, because mm-hmm. because many physicians uh, don't find time to do it, and and there's a lot of uh, physician patient meetings, uh, even with the with diabetic patients that's finished without talking about lifestyle at all. Mm, wow. And, okay. And we hmm. think that we think that uh, it it is enough important to um, to you know to to make some room for it. Absolutely. So does that require like a longer meeting with patients then, or how do you go about that? Because I know that uh, so many well, doctors these days they have like ten minutes or fifteen. Even that. Not yeah. Even that. Yeah. That's that's challenging. It's definitely challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you still have ten minutes, and and you have to decide what's the most important stuff to put in. Mm-hmm. And and I think mm-hmm. lifestyle should get more um, more priority. And and mm-hmm. and more than that, for example, you uh, you you mentioned uh, diabetics patient. Uh, with diabetic mm-hmm. patients, uh, I can use the I can use for example the help of a, a dietitian most of the time. But oh, I have I to see. Make, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, uh, but I'll I'll have to be mindful for, to the fact that that nutrition is important, and to ask mm-hmm. the patient to see a dietitian. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not always happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, did you say that doesn't always happen? <laughs> it's not always happened. No, not it's not, at all. It doesn't always happen. Is it is it very common? I I'm assuming, if I understand it correctly, um, that these these days, a patient is seeing many healthcare practitioners at once. And you're all kind of working together with that patient. Is that true? There's like they can might have their doctor and a dietitian and maybe a yeah, mental yeah, health professional. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's might happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that I'm wondering, how do you find? Do you find that does that work well? Do you do you find that works well within the system to help patients? Uh, it's mostly help them. Because it's more easier for them to 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 use all the facilities because you can okay. you know you can come in one time and see and see many uh, many healthcare provider i mean the, right. the conversation between the the conversation between the healthcare providers might happen if it's not the, in the same day because you know they're working together in the same practice mm-hmm. uh, but it's mostly convenient for the patient. Right. That, okay. Yeah. And I, I was thinking that it would be it would be helpful for them. And then um, yeah. I was wondering. Um, so then, how did? I don't know if you know the answer to this, but how did the Institute for Lifestyle Medicine come about? Um, and then, can you tell us your role there? Like, um, I know that you're a research fellow there. I'm just wondering if you could tell us more uh-huh. about the institute and uh, your involvement and. Um, I, I really love the the tagline of that like exercise is medicine. I just love that. Um, I think that's brilliant. Whoever came up with that, and I know that that maybe wasn't the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine, but um. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the 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 institute was founded a couple of years ago by uh, Dr. Eddie Phillips, uh, okay. which is uh, uh, now the, the director of the institute. Mm-hmm. And okay. I think the, the the I mean the main goal of the institute is to is to educate and empower a physician and other health oh. healthcare providers to um, to incorporate lifestyle medicine into their practice. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. That's 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 the main goal, and and you can break it down to to educate medical students and to educate um, a practicing physician and to educate residents. That's, 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 that's the main goal Go of the institute. Yeah. 
And then I think that's fantastic. And then how have you found, how have you all found that? I mean, how many physicians are being trained right now? Is it, um, is there a lot of interest in it? I'm really curious what it's like from, because I know that it's still a pretty new um, kind of term and um, practice in general. Um, I'm really, I'm personally really excited about it because I really think that it's, it's it has it will have a huge impact on people on both sides of the fence, both for practitioners and also patients. Um, once people, you know, start to understand it more and utilize it more, and I'm wondering what the interest level is on the practitioner side right now. Well, the interest level is is um, is rising, is rising dramatically. Okay. Okay. Um, good. Uh, if, if, if you talk about numbers, so so we are we are doing um, um, for practicing physician two programs a year, and uh, the program is very big. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. There is one that's coming soon in this this June that's going to be in in, uh, in Boston. I saw that. Uh, yes, I was reading from that. Sorry, <laughs> I was reading from sorry. that. <laughs> I was right. I saw that. I was reading from it. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> I'm very excited for yeah, the. Yeah, so- um, the roster. <laughs> <laughs> it's you and Margaret so, Moore so, and Herbert so, Benson, and it's very exciting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah I yeah. wish so, I could so be there. Talking about like uh, a few hundred physicians that we hope that will that will attend, and I usually attend any 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 conference like this. That's fantastic. And uh, we are now about to uh, video this um, this course and and to put it online as 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 um as an online CME program because oh, of great. the interest of so many physicians. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's happening very fast. That's so great. And then um I and then I think this part is fascinating that you're a chef. I mean, um how, how did you oh, get yes, into yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um so how did you get into that and is it I mean, is this something that you had a plan for? Was it um how did that all come about? And I know that you do like um I know you do a lot with this. I mean, this is a huge part of what you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, part of lifestyle medicine is, is understanding that um, that li- that lifestyle it's not um, just bi- uh, biology science; it's a behavioral science. And, and um, if if you would like, for example, t- people to eat better, so you don't need just to teach them what's good and what's bad. You need to teach them how to do it because because mm-hmm. the behavior is to cook, is to eat. If, if I just know that it's better to eat whole grain and I don't know how to cook it and it's not tasty to me and, and I don't know where to buy it and, and, you know, and so on. So it's no chance that I will implement it into my life. Ah, uh, so, I really like um, to say that. Okay, go ahead. So um, my my career goal is to, <laughs> this is quite big, <laughs> is to, uh, is to uh, in, Bring it on. incorporate health, uh, chefs into the uh, health arena. And, and, and that's uh, what I'm working on in, in my lifestyle, in, in my research fellowship. That's one of my uh, main topics. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. And so it's just kind of like um, joining forces, it sounds to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then will, will that also include, um, will the chefs be educating then other, I'm assuming other people on how to prepare food? Yeah. Is that, mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. the goal? And mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. so fantastic. So, um, so, go ahead. So what, yeah. No, so, so what I'm doing at the moment, so I'm uh, a couple of days a week, I'm just leaving my stethoscope aside and putting a chef hat <laughs> and just, just teach people how to, how to cook healthy. Wow. And mm-hmm. I, I hope that while, uh, while it be improved, that it really has a health benefit, so mm-hmm. we'll be able to educate more chefs how to do it. But at this stage, mm-hmm. I'm doing it. That's fantastic. And then you, I mean, you have so many, um, I mean, you have an MBA, and then you also, you were, let's see, I want to pull up, um, where is, I just want to, you, you have, it. you're a, lish, <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> no, no, that's I'm not it. I'm a physician, um, uh, I'm, I was, sorry. You're a physician, and then I was pulling it up here, you, ha- so you studied at Le Cordon Bleu. So yeah, that's, now, that's where that's, I graduated as a, uh, that's when I did my culinary education. So, 
that's just, I mean, that's just very impressive that you fit all that in. I'm just wondering how you, um, how did you have to, for, this is maybe more a personal question, but how did you have time to fit all of that in? Um, of course, that's maybe, I guess when you're really passionate about what you're doing, time doesn't really matter. But I'm just, I'm curious, because um, that, that sounds like a really, that's like a very prestigious program, isn't it? Le Cordon Bleu? Uh yeah yeah yes it is but you know I but I you know I I, I just feel that sometimes you're doing something and you just feel that um, the environment is not ready for that mm-hmm. and and I think it's it's just happening I mean I I don't mm-hmm. spending much of time and effort to convince people it's important uh, I I, th- I think mm-hmm. if I have done such a program like even ten years ago my mm-hmm. life was different. Because mm-hmm. I think less people were listening to physician with like cooking and who cares about food, and and I think now now it's it's uh, the the world is ready for that. Mm, I think so too. I think that was very well said. I think the world is ready. Um, yeah, it's just I mean people are looking for answers. I think. Um, outside of the usual protocol and it is coming down to lifestyle or it's opening up into lifestyle. Maybe that's a better way of saying that. Um, and then uh, this is also a side note though, but how did you fit in an MBA degree? Um, what is, was that? I'm curious what that was about. Was that um, master of business arts, right? How did you fit that in or what was that? What was the reason for doing that? Um because uh, you know, if if you if you would like to uh, all this kind of lifestyle medicine, uh, it's, mm-hmm. um, it's a new field in in the, right. in the medical arena. And, right. Okay. And an MBA, it's not it's not just uh, when one aspect of it is is like managing a huge in corporations, and other part of it is uh, how to how to develop initi- uh, initi- initiatives and how to how to develop ideas into into a real life project. And, right. and that okay. was that was really helpful for me. So, so really, kind of like the maybe like the more business side of how do I get my message out there? Is that one of the reasons that you did that? Uh, yeah, that's that that that's that's part of it because because yeah. because it's not the mainstream, so uh, we right. have to find uh, many um, alternatives of how to fund that, how to raise money for developing our ideas. Yeah. Wow, that's just really impressive. Um, I just and also you, you you're a best-selling author, so you have a book. It's called Delicious Diabetic Recipes: The Gourmet Cookbook for a Healthy Life. Uh-huh. I was wondering if you could tell us about your book. Um, um, when, how, how did that go about? How did you write it? How did you compile it? What was that whole process like? Um, anything you'd like to share? That would be fantastic. Yeah, it was a great experience for me <laughs> to uh, <laughs> try this book. And congratulations, uh, and it, and by the way. Was, uh, sorry? Congratulations, by the way. Sorry. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, and, 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 and I was really happy that, that, that it sold well because, not just because it's, you know, I wrote it, but because mm-hmm. uh, it, it, really, it really helps me to get the impression that, that you know, people are, are really – um, wants to learn about that, and it's important mm-hmm. for, for them. And, and my career goals are, are real and are reasonable. Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. so that was like a, a feedback for me from from outside. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and because you know, because it's like new idea. It's not like writing a, a, a regular cooking book and 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 sells a lot of copies. Is is selling mm-hmm. books of of quite strange idea. So uh, it was really, um, I was really happy about this feedback from from people, and the the process of writing it was, um, um, I, I founded eight years ago a healthy cooking center, mm-hmm. um, okay. and it was it really it was um, a great place. It is actually not a, it was <laughs> it still is it's a great place. <laughs> it still is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Still is, yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's unique with um, that. That's like it's the only place that chef can communicate with with the dietitian. 
because you know food oh, okay. food is a very a very um food is a very powerful um topic for many people and Absolutely. and chefs talk about food and physician talks about food mm-hmm. and the, i mean they, they talk about the same food <laughs> and the food, <laughs> the food that we eat like uh, yeah, yeah i mean we, we cannot Sunday, Monday, eat the, the food that the physician recommend, and you know Wednesday, Thursday, eat the she- the food that the chefs recommend. I mean, we we need mm-hmm. to eat it's the, it's the same food, and, <laughs> and you know these two disciplines are, are almost non communicate between them. Mm. Um, oh, and it's it's amazing. Oh. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, I mean you know you, you know uh, chefs are are. Quite as a, a food stakeholders. I mean, chefs are, are showing on TVs and talk about food all the time, and and we really our like eating behavior are, are really changing by the chef. Um, and so I think that in order to bring a more healthy food in the world, so chefs should communicate with physician and nutritionist, and in 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 the health. Sorry. Oh no, that's. I think that's fascinating. I I never thought about it that way. Um, yeah. So in 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 the healthy cooking center, we mm-hmm. I there is a staff that composed of the dietitian and chefs, and mm-hmm. they develop wow. the food together. Um, wow. And and we that's are doing we are, we are doing work. Yeah, yeah. And we are doing a workshop for for physician uh, for patient like patient are coming to learn how to how to cook healthy food for themselves. Mm-hmm. So I mean, writing the book was just collecting, collecting the pieces from from my work and 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 put it together oh, into into a book. I see. Okay, that uh, is fascinating. And this is the. Yeah. Are you talking about the Hadassah? Am I saying this correctly? Hadassah? How do you say that? Hadassah. Yeah, Healthy you're Cooking saying it Center? perfect. <laughs> okay. And where? And where <laughs> is that in Israel, it. or is <laughs> um, is that here in the United States, or is it in Israel? No, this is back in Israel, but but it's now in in, in, in jo- yeah, but but now in Jocelyn we are we are starting to establish the same uh, the same idea. Oh, uh, that's so fantastic! We, we, we teach patient how, how how to cook. Yeah, we teach diabetic, uh, diabetic patient how to cook. So you're teaching both patients, diabetic patients, how to cook, and then also working with other doctors, like the chefs. Because mm-hmm. I heard you saying like chefs and doctors mm-hmm. working together to develop recipes, right? Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. which is, I think, a fantastic idea. I mean, that's brilliant. And then, so in, so in the Jocelyn, at Jocelyn, it's both patients and also doctors and chefs, all, all of our, and maybe not at the same time, but you're all in there, like, learning and teaching one another? Is that, I'm, uh, just, I'm trying yeah, to get, like, a visual. In, <laughs> okay. For, <laughs> for, for example, if, let's, let's, this is something, for example, is really real. The conference on June that you, mm-hmm. uh, that, that you saw, so yes. I, I I have there a spot, and in that spot I, I will teach uh, the audience to cook, to uh, to cook. Wow. Hmm. And what are you going to be teaching? Can you tell us if you're going to be there? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But uh, and one of the reasons I don't know yet that because mm-hmm. before any session, we send the participant a survey, mm-hmm. and we ask them what they would like to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what what do they need to know more in order to eat healthier? So and and usually I'm adjusting the uh, teaching uh, to the audience uh, wishes. Mm, that's great though. I love that. It's like kind of being very in the moment with it and like meeting, like really, um, you know, like fulfilling people's needs, um, which is fantastic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Instead of just having like an agenda. Um, uh-huh. So that's, I, mean, last, I just love that. Oh, go ahead. No, sorry. Well, last, I was just going to say, I just, I, last, uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Last, 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 last presentation that I did was last uh-huh. week. And oh, really? what the physician wanted to know is, yeah, in, in Spalding Rehabilitation mm-hmm. uh, Hospital here in Boston. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, I teach the residents. Uh, and uh, what they wanted to know is how to cook vegetables among the mm-hmm. all ingredients that was the gap that they feel they most needed mm, and okay. how to yes. cook the vegetables uh, easy and quick 
Mm, we yeah, which everybody food, wants. But easy, easy and quick uh, for yeah. techniques. <laughs> no, so then maybe that's the question I can ask you. So then how, do, how does one cook vegetables easy and quick? Because I think that is a stumbling block for a lot of people. So when we talk about you know, successfully um, living, like uh, finding sustainable, changing our behavior in a sustainable way, I think a stumbling block is cooking vegetables. I really do. Um, so can you give us some tips for, this is, This would be both for um, practitioners and client or patients. Um, how sure, do you, we'll, we'll how do, you do that? Um I, 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 th- I think I think we should we should think about uh, easy preparing in a more wide angle, because um, for example, if, if if there is a dish that I can make once and can stay in my fridge and be tasty for five days, mm-hmm. so even even if to make that dish will take half an hour, mm-hmm. it still it still will be for the whole week and an easy way to consume vegetables. That's true. So, so what's I'm, that I'm, dish? I'm not looking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What's that dish? <laughs> <laughs> so that, what what we did uh, last week was a whole workshop on antipasti. It's okay. uh, it's an oh, Italian wow. techniques of 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 making uh, vegetables. Mm-hmm. Actually, is it, is behind vegetables. It's you you can do antipasti out of of cheese and out of you know, chicken as well. But but we were focused on vegetables. Okay. And and what that means is like is cooking the vegetables in a very minimal way, mm-hmm. and and then let let them cool down and eat them cold. And okay. by doing that, by doing that, you actually have uh, a tasty vegetables in the mm-hmm. fridge uh, that you can consume for almost the whole week, and and you don't have to make a salad out of it, and you don't have to spice it. You can just take it out of the container and, and eat it. And we um, we cook together many kinds of, of antipasti. And, and I think what's, what's important for me that usually when I teach people, and that's, that's the difference, I think one of the difference between our work and the regular chef works, mm-hmm. that we try to teach the people how to cook at home and mm-hmm. not necessarily a specific gourmet food. For example, okay. I, I won't tell the patient you should mix um, uh, once one uh, zucchini with uh, one leaf of mint and two tablespoons of, of um, balsamic vinaigrette. And that is the great recipe, and you should eat that. Mm-hmm. I, I will, I will <laughs> explain that if you if you if you take any vegetable that you like and mix it with balsamic vinaigrette and any, any herb that you like or any herb that you uh, still have at home from other, di- from other dish, you can make mm-hmm. an antipathy that would be great. So mm-hmm. we're not, we are not, not looking at the like, specific, you know, two Michelin recipe, mm-hmm. uh, two Michelin star recipe. We are, we, are, we are looking about learning techniques of how to cook more. Yeah, and just getting like the basics so that um and hopefully people are getting um feeling more comfortable with cooking the basics. Um You're so right. I, I think yeah. I think that cooking is is much with is much about confidence. I think that mm-hmm. many people can make much more much more food than they can think they can. Mm. Oh. I I love how you say that. Um I that you know, cooking is so much about confidence. And yeah, I, I think that's definitely true for me. Um, I I'm, I definitely cook more than I used to, or prepare food more than I used to, but um, mm-hmm. but I still feel like there's there's more to go, and I feel like I my confidence goes up and down with it. I'll you know, but I, I cooking is very creative in nature too, isn't it? Isn't it part of it just taking yeah. risks and and just seeing what comes out, and then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, but but and 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 we we're not necessarily talking about making like a, a brulee cream that you have to bring the food into specific uh, degree. Um, that's that's maybe skill, uh, not just confidence. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you know, but okay. just making yourself something to eat. Uh, most of us, mm-hmm. if 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 most of us would go into the kitchen and and you know cook something together, it it will be fine. <laughs> mm, I love that. That's that takes kind of the 
kind of the the fear out of it is just yeah let's just go in there together and just enjoy each other's company and let's see what we come up with and then just knowing yeah. that you you knowing that it'll be good for you um is definitely better uh-huh. than um fast food and um I just I love that and I it's um I think I just I find it fascinating that you're a chef um in addition to being a doctor and and in addition to having an MBA like it's just such a great combination it just seems like you're very dedicated and passionate to um you know sharing your message um and um I I'm wondering if you have any are there any recipes you want to share or takeaways is there anything that really um, stands out for you that you want to make sure people know about or understand or have an have an aha or insight about from your um, work. Maybe I, I can I, I I can send you some some antipasti recipes if you if you can if you can um, put it on the site. Sure, I can definitely try. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. That'd be, be great. Happy to do great it. for me. That's fantastic. And, and That's I, so nice of you. Yeah. And and I think that maybe yeah. one maybe one easy recipe that that we can just discuss and and people okay. will remember very easy is okay. um, um, maybe two. I mean, one okay. would be just, I mean, we, <laughs> <laughs> about, about um, antipasti. So so I think yeah. I think that the most the most uh, easy way is. Um, is using um, a grill pan, and, and, if, and let's say this is another tip that I really would like to share, because okay. grill pan is it's a it's a great it's a great pan to have in the kitchen, okay. because uh, first of all you don't have to use oil at all while okay. while um, huh. while you, while using it. Not I didn't that, know that. Like using not not that using olive oil or canola oil is good for is is bad for your health. It's those mm-hmm. are great that those are great great oils. But if you, uh, but you you can use the um, the grill pan very easy and very uh, clean. And okay. uh, if if you if you take a zucchini for example, and cut it into um, into slice. Mm-hmm. So I, I usually I usually like to cut to cut zucchini into slices in a diagonal way. So okay. uh, we have like maybe ten, fifteen slices, which are a bit longer than than just regular slices. Okay. Uh, and and I and, and I roast them on the grill pan for like maybe half half a minute on each side until okay. until uh, I can see like the the grill lines on the on the zucchini, and okay. then and then I take it off the grill pan. Okay. And then I'm doing uh, on a on a. Um, Med, maybe medium ball. I'm combining. Um, if you talk about four zucchini, so you you, you combine four uh, tablespoon of um, uh, balsamic vinaigrette with four mm-hmm. tablespoon of olive oil, with mm-hmm. one mince of of uh, garlic cloves, mm-hmm. and some salted pepper, and put all the zucchini inside. And in, uh, and you can also uh, chop some uh, chop some uh, nana into it, like four tablespoon of chopped nana uh, of chopped uh, mint. Sorry. Okay. Um, Sounds really and good. That's it. It it can it can be in the fridge like for three four days, and you have a great wow. zucchini. You, huh. you can put uh, in your in your sandwich. You can you can eat it as a side dish at dinner. Uh, you can use it as a snack. I mean, you can use it. Many way and 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 you do it once and and you have it for almost a whole week. I, that's a great recipe and it, so there are a couple of things. So cooking it just very slightly is that part of why it stays fresh for so long? That and also like the vinegar is it is like preserving it? Is it the combination of the two or um, does, does it kind you of know, like um, you know the goal. The, the 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 simple goal the goal is to consume more vegetables. Oh, uh, yeah, and exactly. If, if you right. if you I mean if you have the energy to mm. do it every day, so it's better. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, really. I mean, if and if you have the energy, to, you know, to plant the zucchini in your garden and to and to have them <laughs> from from your garden, so it's even better. But you know, better. we're talking about real life, and and it's really important. Right. It's really important to understand that. That uh, you know to take care of yourself takes time, uh, and and oh. and people people have to mm. not not have people today not have 
plenty of time. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's it's, the, um, um, that's most of us are like in shortest of time. So we, we, we try to, to, you know, to take the most important things and, and to help people to incorporate them into their life. So, so if if you okay. cook the vegetables and you and you can use it for a couple of days, so it's it's fine. It's 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 really mm-hmm. okay. Um, I just I, okay. That is yeah. Okay, so there are two things that really stood out for me that you said there. A is that we the goal is to eat more vegetables, and I think that's huge because they're alkaline, right? And um, they're really going to help. I mean, we're supposed to be eating what is it like eighty percent alkaline? It's really going to help your digestive system, right? In general, mm-hmm. like we want to. There's just there's so many reasons to be eating vegetables, and I think there's this huge block with so many of us. It's like the it's like one of the fundamental building blocks of life, and there's this huge block with it. So I just really yeah. appreciate that recipe. Um, but also, it's um, I find like the more vegetables I eat, they they to me, when your palate gets more refined, they start to taste better. And there's you know there's like a sweetness, a little bit of sweetness to them, and They'd make you feel so good, though. There's that huge part of it. You're once so you start right. eating them, you're so right. you feel you're so, right. so much better. You know, so, yeah, yeah, you're so right. Yeah. One of the challenges of our culture is mm-hmm. that we are um, adjusted, our palate was adjusted to such a strong taste. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if, we, if we, like, drink Coke, even mm-hmm. if it's a Diet Coke, <laughs> So yes. the, the the taste is still very very strong. Very so like strong. after after mm-hmm. drinking after drinking diet coke, it's almost hard to uh, to to feel a taste of an apple. Mm, but but yes. when your palate adjusted mm-hmm. to more like gentle tasted, so mm-hmm. you can feel such a great tasted, and mm-hmm. and the variety of the tasted in the and in in the fruits is so much more exciting than the than in the uh, sodas. Because because yeah. soda is sweet, strong, sweet, and that's it. And and when you and when you adjust your palate to 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 you know to feel the mint and the apple and the pears and and the orange and it's so enjoyable. Mm, yes, and there are so many different tastes, like subtle tastes uh-huh. that uh-huh. Um, there's like there's sweet and uh-huh. sour and salty and bitter and uh-huh. and there so that's part of eating food, right? Like preparing it and eating it in a healthy way, and using fresh uh-huh. ingredients. You your senses get to experience all of those ingredients yeah. as well, and sure. that's that that's motivating, right? Like that makes you want to have more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, by the way, and, and, and the uh-huh. same with salt. When when eating the uh, food which is so salty, like all the all the snacks mm-hmm. and and the uh, and and uh, and the chips, so you mm-hmm. cannot feel the taste of the vegetables. Mm-hmm. And just after adjusting yeah. your palate, you you start to enjoy all all this taste all, all this tasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. I think that's a huge point. Um, there are two points, but that's that's one of them. That is that um, our because our palates are so used to, like you were saying, salt and these sugars and artificial sweet, like artificial, like these amped up kind of um, commercial products. That um, their goal, right, is to sell food, right? Like they're trying. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just, but but their goal is to make their food taste as good as possible. So if if that's what you're eating all day and every day, um, yeah, home cooked food is is gonna taste is not gonna taste the same to you as it would to somebody else who is maybe more used to like growing their own vegetables. And but the point here is that um, I think the point is that actually eating your vegetables vegetables actually taste great and not only taste great but they make you feel great. And it's just it is a matter of um, kind of waking back up to that and. Um, and taking some risks um, and trying new things and allowing your body to adjust. And then your body will say, your body will be like, I need Thank this. You. Like, please give me more. You're so right. Yeah. So it's it's so, it's self-fulfilling. It's kind of like I notice, like, the more active I am, um, the more my body asks for healthy food anyway. You know, so I, I don't really have a choice in the matter. My body just says, I need, I need vin- minerals and protein. You know, please give me, please you know, re- fuel me back up here. <laughs> um, yeah, fill, fill me. And then, but also, it also affects your state of mind. I noticed in the event that's coming up, practicing lifestyle medicine, you guys are taking like a meditation break. And I mean, the, the better we eat, I notice that it affects my states of mind. And then it, it changes my frame of mind. And so I feel more peaceful. 
and I feel like there is more time. It relaxes me, and especially the more vegetables that you have, that means the more minerals that you have, right? So you're going to naturally feel more relaxed with, like, more magnesium in your body and who knows, you know, um, who knows what else. And mm-hmm. that kind of brings me mm-hmm. to the second point mm-hmm. that you made <laughs> is that taking care of yourself takes time. Um, this is, I have to tell you, this is one of my new favorite quotes ever. Um, I needed to hear this personally, and um, I just, I hope it's okay if I quote you on this in the future, because I think that's brilliant. And, um, you know, in our culture, we tend, I mean, we, everybody talks about wanting to take care of themselves. Oh, I need to do this and this and this, but I don't have the time. And it's like, well, at some point, you have to have that realization, don't you, that it does take time to take care of yourself, and so you have to prioritize. And isn't that kind of like coming full circle, like isn't that what lifestyle medicine is all about, is um, it is changing those behaviors, including including like making time to take care of yourself. I mean, wouldn't you say that that's yeah. one of the behaviors? <laughs> sure. You know you know that many people claim that after, after like um, – Finding time for themselves, they realize that they they still do all the other uh, important things they they need to do. I mean, it's not really, um, it's not really affect the, the other the the other goals in life. Mm, yes, I have to kind of agree with that. And I don't know who said this. I don't know if it was Deepak Chopra or somebody said this. I don't know. Um, I, I hear so many quotes these days. I can't remember who said what, but. Somebody said there's really no such thing as time anyway. Like you have, or they said you have all the time in the world. You know, just just take your time and do what's what matters what matters to you. And you know, you you have the time. It's we have this artificial relationship with time. I think, and it, it I find it very concerning yeah. that you know we we tend to think that the world's going to end if we don't do this and this and like A, B, and C right away and. But in, we're kind of exchanging our life energy for these, you know, these these things that maybe don't even exist, like these um, these deadlines. I mean, deadlines do exist, but at the same time, what's more important, you know, like if you don't have a foundation of well-being, health and well-being, then <laughs> you're not going to be there for those deadlines anyway. So <laughs> I don't know. I just I really <laughs> I don't know. I just um, I I really appreciate your. Um, insight and expertise because it's I really I do think this is a huge part of I mean I'm still learning about lifestyle medicine but um kind of listening to you speak I feel like I have a better understanding of it now um well thank you so you much know, yeah thank I just I really appreciate me. yeah I really appreciate you coming on and um yeah I mean I just I think that a few food is a huge component of it and con- reconnecting with what sustains you physically right like I mean and then also just taking more time for yourself and um again taking care taking care of yourself takes time so um i just is there anything else that you wanted to add ronnie i just i wanted to thank you so much for being here and i just i just it's such a pleasure to meet you um um on the phone and um <laughs> on linkedin and thank you so much i had uh, i had a great time oh great thank you um okay so there's I guess I guess we'll probably um, come to a conclusion unless there's anything else that you want to say or um, I, I want to mention your book. Your book, Delicious Diabetic Recipes, is on Amazon, and um, it's by Dr. Ronnie Pollock. Um, again, do you want to say your own name to make? I, I hope I keep. I'm worried you, that you, I'm not. You, 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 you really? pronounce it just that perfect. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, nice, good enough try anyway. Um, okay, so delicious <laughs> diabetic recipes, and um, and again, um, you are a, a research fellow with the Institute of Lifestyle Medicine, which is part of the Jocelyn Diabetes awesome. Center, is mm-hmm. that correct, out of Harvard, mm-hmm. Harvard Medical School, and um, it is such a pleasure to meet you today, and I can't thank you enough for being here, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day there on the East Coast, um, whatever oh, is you plan for Saturday, and um, I will talk to you um, offline at some point. So um, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, thanks. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
is Edie Summers. I'm actually still on the line. I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, I'm so grateful to have um, Ronnie on um, my show here, and um, that was just I found that, I just I hope that that was um, valuable for you to learn a little bit more about life what lifestyle medicine even is. And I forgot to mention I wanted to mention this that um, Ronnie is going to be one of our um, he's going to be a contributing expert to our new um, well online wellness community Club Smash On. This is really exciting. Um, we're building this new community. Um, that's going to have um, really amazing experts on it, and um, he's going to be sharing um, some of his information on there as well. So you can find him there as well. That's coming up soon and here in a few months. So I'll keep you posted on um, Club Smash On as it develops. Um, but I just wanted to thank you so much for listening today. And, um, yeah, I just I hope that this was – I really had some aha moments here. So I know that sounds very over, but I really did. And um, I really hope that – um, you do find the time to take care of yourself. And um, and I'm saying this to myself, too. So um, I really feel like, you know, we live in this really modern world, and at the same time, um, you know, we have pretty ancient bodies still. That's a quote from someone else, and I have no idea who it is at this point, but it's really true. Um, we kind of need to go back to basics a little bit. I know that I'm doing this. Um, I'm really trying to make an effort to be um, present for my life and also my health and well-being. And I, I really believe that well-being is the basis of um, – it's kind of like the foundation of achieving whatever else is that you want to achieve. And, um, you know, I didn't I didn't plan to get into health and well-being and medicine and all of those things. I was going to be a writer, and I guess I really am in a way. But, you know, I had my own health challenges that sort of brought me down this road and I'm so glad that it did because um, well-being, the practice of well-being is um, definitely a way in. Um, it's like a, it can be a foundation and a way in to discovering um, other parts of life. Like you can master your well-being and then out of that you can master anything, but it really is kind of a foundational skill. And um, so um, we're going to have some really great um, other interviews coming up here and I just really want to keep the conversation going with everyone so I really encourage you to um, stay tuned um, keep tuning in um, both here and um, with yourself and um, let's just keep the conversation going about um, how can we create a sustainable life for ourselves on all levels of life um, in terms of health and wellness and fitness relationships um, personally, um, professionally, financially, all of it. Um, one of my main passions is self-development, and I'm, I definitely have a lot of guests that come on and we talk about self-development, um, but I love the combination of well-being and self-development. I think they go really well together, hand in hand. So, um, so stay tuned. Um, we're going to keep the conversation going here, and I hope you have a beautiful day, and I will talk to you again soon. Actually, I have um, an interview coming up on Monday um, with Rusty Gregory, and he is a certified well coach as wellness coach as well. So he and I both were trained um, with the Well Coaches Institute. And so that's I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to create his show page here really soon. And so you can come back and listen to him. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about um, self self health care, um, health care reform, um, kind of what's going on with health care reform and how we can make it really personal. So um, come and tune back in on, when, on mon next, this coming Monday. That will be um, Monday, April 28th. I'll be talking to Rusty Gregory. He's a certified well coaches, wellness coach. Um, and again, we share that in common. I'm a well coaches, well co wellness coach as well, and I absolutely love wellness coaching. And I'm pretty sure that's how I met Ronnie, uh, although I'm not really 100% sure at this point. I meet so many amazing people, and sometimes I lose track of how exactly we connected. But um, I really thank you for listening in today, and I hope you have a beautiful, um, healthy, relaxing day. Take some time for yourself if you can, and um, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.